Essential thrombocytemia, or ET, is considered benign uh, myeloproliferative neoplasms where uh, life expectancy is normal, but we know that some patients don't do well, and primary reason for not doing well is blood clot. So assessment of the risk of uh, thrombosis is the way to go in every practice. It used to be that we use two factors to divide ET patients in those that have a low risk for blood clot or a high risk for blood clot. And it used to be age 60, younger or older, and a history of blood clot, yes or no. And if the patient was older than 60 or had a history of blood clot, you would say that's a high risk patient and you need to treat the patients with the medications to lower the platelet number as indication of lowering the thrombotic risk. Now, it has been known over the last some uh, five years that not all ET patients, even with these separations, are the same. As we know, biologically, essential thrombostemia is driven by presence of uh, driver mutations that activate inside the malignant cells what we call JAK-STAT pathway. Every patient has activation of JAK-STAT pathway, and that can be because of a JAK-2 mutation or color reticulin mutation or MIPO mutation. So JAK2 positive ET patients have a higher risk of blood clotting than the others. And therefore, there is a significant change in assessment of who is a high risk ET patient for blood clot. It is those that have a age over 60 with the JAK2 mutation. And I'll repeat that because it's important. Age over 60 with the JAK2 mutation, not otherwise. Or of course, if the patient has a history of blood clot. So practically, for example, I always go by the examples. I have a newly diagnosed 75-year-old gentleman with the high platelets, has an ET, and has a color reticulin mutation, so not the JAK2. I don't need to treat that patient with the cytoreductive therapy anymore to control the platelets. Uh, quite a change for everyday practice.